Right. One Friday evening, I got a call off our youth team manager. He said to me, um, there's a possibility you could actually start tomorrow because Danny Wallace, who was the, the forward at the time, uh, is going to have a fitness test in the morning. Uh, subsequently, Danny had that fitness test at around about 11 o'clock, half 11, and failed it. And the manager then, Chris Nichol, came to me and said, you're in, you're playing. So there was no time for any of my family to come down from Newcastle to come and watch the game against Arsenal at the Dell. So there was no time for me to get nervous. Uh, the manager said, you're in. I had my pre-match meal. My pre-match meal, I always remember, was fillet steak. Um, I'd never had fillet steak before in my life. The only reason I asked for it was because one of the big hitters, who was Jimmy Case, had said he wanted it. So that's the reason why I, uh, I said I want it. Travelled to the Dell with the rest of the players and then that was it. I was in, I was playing. And I scored a hat-trick on my debut against Arsenal. Uh, we won 4-2, 9th of April, I think it was, 1988. Bill got the ball. Broke Jimmy Greaves' record in terms of the youngest player to score a top-flight hat-trick, and I still think that is stands today. I was on cloud nine, I just didn't know what to do. Um, I'd sort of announced myself to the world, uh, and that's when it became more difficult. Chris Nichol, the manager, he said, I'll see you tomorrow morning to clean all the kit because I was still an apprentice. We were cleaning the toilets, we were cleaning the dressing rooms, the boots, the kit, which was Southampton's way and his way of uh, just saying, keep your feet on the ground. I got a call from Southampton to say that Blackburn, um, who had just been promoted, and it was the start of the Premier League, so the old First Division had stopped and it was now starting. Uh, August 1992 was the first season of the Premier League. And I'd got a call off Southampton to say Blackburn were interested in me, wanted to buy me. And I was more than willing to go and speak to the great Kenny Daglish, who was the manager. He'd won the playoffs at Wembley. And I went up and I signed. And then we went to start the Premier League at Crystal Palace away, 3-3 I think it, uh, it was, and scored two, uh, two decent goals from outside the, the area. I, like everyone else, couldn't wait to get uh, our season underway by playing here at, uh, at home for the first time in the Premier League uh, against the might of, uh, of Arsenal. Some of the names on that Arsenal team, Tony Adams, David Seaman, Lee Dixon, uh, Alan Smith. I could feel, I could sense it and still remember it now that there was still a buzz in, the, uh, in, in this dressing room that, and a belief that we could go out and win the game. Well, when you're walking out, you could, uh, we could hear the excitement uh, of the crowd. You've got to walk across the uh, uh, visitors changing room here, um, door would have been shut and then they've got to cross out and come through you because we're Blackburn team on the right and Arsenal on the left hand side and it was just huge excitement to get out onto the pitch, there'd been so much spoke, spoken about about Blackburn Rovers. When Leicester won the league, I don't, no one really saw Leicester coming, it just sort of happened and the difference with us winning it here at Blackburn was that Everyone knew we were coming. Everyone was aware of who and what Blackburn were. But we were hard to stop. With our crowd behind us, with the ability in our team, we knew that we were going places. Well, this was my first ever goal at Ewood Park. This is where it actually started, around about this area here, where I'd peeled off the defenders and it was a, it was a challenge. Well, it wasn't really a challenge from Jimmy Carter. I sort of gave him a little nudge and pushed him into the uh, into the, onto the touchline and uh, won that little battle then headed straight for that goal down there and looking up and two defenders coming towards him I'm thinking why not just have a have a pop and I did and it took a little deflection just a little one and then I just saw it going over the uh, over David Seaman's head and into the back of the net and then the crowd just going mad. If we weren't going to be successful at Blackburn, it wouldn't be for the want of working hard. 
that was the good thing about what we had in our dressing room. Everyone, again, we'd won the game, um, so we've, uh, we've now got four points after two games and got off to a great start. As any forward will tell you, if you get off to a good start, then then I've helped. It was a little bit more different this one because I'd played, or we had played in the charity shield against Manchester United, Newcastle, and been dumped 4-0. Um, and then our first league game was Everton away. Uh, so we go to Everton, we get beaten 2-0. So my first two games, I think, oh God, what have I done here? <laughs> and then my home debut, uh, we play uh, Wimbledon at home in the midweek. Remember the feeling of walking out. It was all everything that I wanted, all my dreams as a kid. I'd stood on those terraces about to walk onto the pitch at St James's with a number nine shirt on. As the world's most expensive player, it was it was my club. I just felt incredibly proud. And then to score. My first one against Wimbledon, midweek. Late on in the game, second half. We had a free kick on the left-hand side. Down at, the, uh, at that end, um, at the Leeser's end, as I was, uh, I was brought up on. And I just remember, just why not? Go and have a go. Pressure on, had to start and deliver as soon as possible. I just thought, I'm going to have this, I'm going to want it. And picked my spot about 25 yards out, and I remember hitting it and curling it. And then that was it. it the, I remember the roof coming off, ball in the back of the net, that feeling of, wow, this is what I've waited for all these years, this is what I've come home for to, uh, to Newcastle. Rob Lee, Les Ferdinand, David Ginola, Peter Beardsley, who would, uh, was a huge name, was a great player. Tino Asprea was, uh, was there, Keith Gillespie. Yeah, uh, we'd won the game, hard scored, so it was, it was a pretty perfect night, really. When you retire from playing, the one thing I do miss, and I think most players will tell you, is that you miss that adrenaline rush. That feeling for 90 minutes of, of it's just, it's an incredible, really difficult to, uh, to describe how you feel. I mean, I've already said about the feeling of scoring a goal, but when you run up the tunnel, and when you hear the crowd, you can never, there's nothing that recreates that when you retire, the buzz of, of running out and hearing and scoring and winning. You can never ever get that back, so I do, uh, I do miss that 90 minutes here. Yeah. You have to realise why you're making your debut in the first place, because you're good enough. I know it's very difficult because everyone says, well, try and enjoy it. But you really, really should because you're in such a privileged position. You can imagine how many millions and millions of kids want to do what you're doing in terms of walking out on a football pitch, live on television, in front of 50 or 60,000 people. It doesn't get any bigger or better than that. That's what you want as a kid. That's what you kick the ball around on the yard for, on the school playground. Or Now you've got the opportunity. Don't throw it away. Just, I would just give everything.